Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study the K nearest neighbors model. So the main idea here is extremely simple and it means like we can classify a new data point based on similar classified cases. This, this idea also works for, for prediction or regression. So in the case of one nearest neighbor, it means like we can classify a new data point just by considering the class value of the most similar data point. In other words, we find the nearest neighbor and then we use its class to predict the class of a new data point. Same thing with, for regression. Right? If we were doing regression, we just see the output value of the most similar data point and then we use that value to predict the value of our new data point. For this, clearly we're gonna need a similarity metric and it could be any distance metric, for example, the Euclidean distance. The main problem with the one nearest neighbor approach is, is that it is too sensitive to errors or noise in data, right? Because if we have any noisy data point it's going to affect all the neighborhood for the predictions. This is an example of uh, one nearest neighbor for regression. We can see that the way we, we draw the, the line that pass over the, the data points is by just moving the red vertical line across all the possible points and then we write the prediction according to the one nearest neighbor. So in other words, if we stand up here, then we can just look at the nearest neighbor and then predict and write that prediction as a gray data point. So this line at the end is telling us what is the prediction for any given data point here in the domain. So given that we are predicting according to the, the most similar neighbor, we get very, very noisy predictions. In other words, this model is really complex, right? Same thing here in this other case. We get this kind of stairs effect in where, for example, for this point, all this area is going to be predicted according to the prediction of this data point or training point. And as soon as we move away from this point and we get next to this point, then we jump already into this area for the next prediction. So it is clearly sort of like a too complex model. So what is K nearest neighbors? For classification, it means that instead of using one neighbor, we use the K most similar points to a given point P. So then among the K neighbors, we find the most voted class. And later we classify our new data point P according to that most voted class. And for prediction or regression is, is very similar we find the k nearest neighbors and we average the output among all those neighbors and we predict the output of our new data point p as the average of the output of the neighbors. So now there's the same example, but now instead of one neighbor, we use k equals to nine. And we can see already that we have a more smooth model because instead of making that the gray line passes over every single training point, it is passing through the middle. So it has a much more smooth line or prediction, right? Because it is averaging over a neighborhood for a specific location, right? So this model is less noisy and is more suitable for real prediction, right? Same thing here. So in this case, instead of going over every single case, we, we are just passing somehow through the middle of the training points. What are the Voronoi diagrams? In this example here, we have two cases, the three nearest neighbor and seven nearest neighbor. We can see that we have points of two classes, the blue circles and the red crosses, right? So if we want to classify this point here with the plus symbol, right? And we want to use in this case, three nearest neighbor, we need to draw a circle and increase the radius until we grab three points. And in this case, 
these are the three points, right? In this case, we have two red crosses and one blue circle. So according to three nearest neighbor, the classification for the plus symbol will be red cross. On the other hand, in this case, for seven nearest neighbor, we draw a circle with a radius big enough to grab seven points, seven classified points, and then we can see that we have four blue circles and three red crosses. So in this case, the classification will be a blue circle. What means the polygons that are here across the, the input domain? Well, each of these regions means that for any new data point that falls within this region, the nearest neighbor will be the only point that we have now in the region. So it's like the governance region for every single training point, right? So if we, if we see that we get a new data point in this area here, we know that any position within this polygon is going to have as the nearest neighbor this blue circle. So this area is the governance area for this blue circle, right? So if we were to use one nearest neighbor to classify this plus symbol, the classification would be red cross because the plus symbol is falling into the region in where this red cross is governing. So what are the pros and cons of the nearest neighbor model? The first pro is like we do not spend training time before classifying. For example, in the decision tree model, we had to first train the tree by building it from the training set. And we had to spend time in that part of the process. Here, we don't have to build any classification model. We just spend time when we need to classify. So the good thing also is that this approach allows to learn very complex functions because in the end, it's not learning anything and it's not building any analytical version of a function. It is just predicting according to the neighbor. And in cases when we use few neighbors, we can start modeling an, a very complex function without actually modeling it directly. So recall that a function is just any machine that can return an output given any input. Sometimes we know the analytical version of the function and sometimes we don't know it. But how we can know that a function is really complex if we start drawing the prediction for several data points in the domain, we can sort of have an understanding of the complexity of the function by seeing the figure of the function in two dimensions. So in general, when we have models that are like black boxes in where we do not know the analytical version of the function, but we are able to get a prediction for any given input, those black boxes could be really complex if we want. The main cons of this model is that they are slow at classification time because it must calculate the distance of the new point to all the existing training points and find the k nearest neighbors. It is very sensitive to noisy variables because usually if we use noisy variables when we calculate the similarity to one specific data point, those noisy variables are going to affect the similarity metric, and then we are going to get bad results. The other problem with this model is that it won't scale to high dimensions because of the cursor dimensionality problem. We are going to talk about that a bit later. So this is a very simple example that we can try. Um, we have a table of two dimensions points in a binary classification setup with two possible classes. And then you can play around and see that what will be the classification for different positions in the 2D plane, right? So for example, this yellow triangle, if it's here, if we use one nearest neighbor, clearly the classification will be a blue line. But as far as we start using more neighbors, we're going to get the pink square classification, probably, right? We need, we need to calculate the distance and then uh, see the class of the k nearest neighbors.